Hey folks, I'm here with Chris McQueen. Hey! Well, no, we're not actually here in the same room, but we are here on your computer. And today we're going to talk about the sounds that we used in the song, Duck People. But in order to talk about those sounds, we have to talk about the sounds that inspire the sounds that we used in the song, Duck People. And in order to do that, we're going to need to take a journey to a faraway place. That place is... You see, the 80s was a time of some very strong stylistic and cultural choices. Clothes had lots of zippers, hair had lots of hairspray and various colors, and video games were everywhere. In fact, the sound of video games became quite recognizable, and eventually people started to feel nostalgic about this sound. Enter the SID chip. SID stands for Sound Interface Device, and it was the built-in programmable sound chip for many Commodore computers, including most famously the Commodore 64. Now, this was the first chip that was available at home because it was included in a home computer, and the easy availability of this chip sparked an entire genre called chiptune. With chiptune, people would trade MIDI files and play them on these chip-based hardware machines. Eventually, synthesizer manufacturers got into the game, such as Swedish-based company Electron with their famous box called the SID Station. The SID Station had a MIDI plug in the back and you could plug your SID Station into a computer for sequencing or into a keyboard and that opened up all sorts of options. This SID Station belongs to my good friend Nick Littlemore. I borrowed it from him because I heard these incredible sounds produced by another friend, J. Walter Hawks, in the scoring of a children's short, Ooglu and Anju. Take a listen. Ooglu. Anju. Isn't that unbelievable? It was all the things for me. So I went down the rabbit hole looking at vintage chip synths and other sample sounds. I didn't use the SID station on Duck People, but I did find a bunch of SID emulations and other software that could make up the sounds that I was hearing in my head. The interesting thing about Duck People is that it's a rare situation where I conceived the entire song with soft synths. I think that's because of the artificial nature of the song, the sounds, and what I wanted from it. So we've got all these soft synths here. Uh, let's take a look. Here's the main melody. If we look here, we see that that sound is an emulation of the RP2A0 chip, which is an NES chip. In fact, you can see here the outline of the NES. This is all using chip sounds, a plugin from Plogue, and the sound has an interesting stepped bend. And then the second part of this melody is another emulation, an emulation of the P8253 chip. The interesting thing about the P8253 chip is it's the sound that was used on DOS computers for the startup chime. This one also has the stepped bending. And it has some speakier emulation. That's why you get that sort of small speaker room sound. And we have the B section sound, which is like a synthetic Rhodes that I programmed. I like weird sounds. I like sounds that have some little imperfections, and it reminds me of some synths that I've played that have vibrato. So this is a DX emulation, comes with main stage and logic, and I added this vibrato here. This sound up here, this sound is actually another emulation. This is an emulation of the 8580 chip, which was the SID chip from Commodore, and it's the better of the two SID chips, the later generation. It uses LFO to create the repeats. So you can see the LFO here. And it's timed. I don't usually play solo synths that sound like mini mode. I think that's great, and I think they sound incredible, but I usually try to find a solo sound that's a little bit different. 
something dirty, something with some grit on it. And this is a plugin from Yuhi called Diva. So even though it's not a mini Moog sound, it does use a very similar architecture of three oscillator, standard ladder filter like you have on a Moog, and then selectable envelopes here. So this sound has a little bit of dirt in it, and I added some noise. I also programmed the modulation wheel to give me some filter sweep. So that's it. All soft sense. You can make this stuff work with soft sense. I think it's just all about working on your conception. But now that I've shown you what I did on keyboard, we're going to cut over to Chris and he's going to show you what he did on guitar. Okay, so what we did on the guitar is definitely not quite as fancy as the SID chip stuff, but it is uh, a number of cool effects pedals that we put together in a special way to kind of create at least a unique sound for the song. I ended up using pretty much just one sound for the whole song, and then I would just gradually adjust the knobs as I go along to kind of change the sound a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this totally clean pedal board and show you piece by piece how we layer on different effects to end up with the sound that's on the recording. So first of all, this is just the clean guitar sound. Uh, I'm playing this Mulan Telecaster style guitar, and it also has a whammy bar, which most Telecasters don't have, which adds a whole lot of fun to the instrument. You can do the Clarissa explains it all, her neighbor is coming over sound. Hi Sam, did you get them? That's not the 80s, that's the 90s, my bad. I'm playing into the Supro Royal Reverb, and I don't even have the reverb on, it's just totally dry right now. So the first thing that I always think to use is overdrive. And I'm gonna be using this Archer by J Rocket Pedals. This is a pedal that not only has been on my pedal board for years, but is probably been on for years. I almost never play without this pedal on. I tend to like just a little bit of thickness and warmth in the sound. And this is a very transparent overdrive, meaning that if you turn the gain all the way down, it's almost like it's not on. So I keep it on all the time. Uh, with the gain all the way down or close to down, and then I turn the gain up with my foot as I go along. And I should mention that what I use to allow myself to adjust things with my feet are these little plastic doohickeys called Wingman, made by Option Knob. These are awesome. You basically uh, take any knob off that you are most likely to want to adjust, you put this on instead, and basically got an expression pedal on any knob that you want. I've also started to do this thing where I get rubber feet, like for furniture, from a hardware store, and I cut them down to rings of just the right size, and put those on, and that gives me some grip with my foot. So let's put the overdrive in the chain and see what that sounds like. If you have the gain turned all the way down, it almost doesn't do anything at all. You can hear a little bit of breaking up, a little bit of warmth and compression, which is nice, and you can really feel it when you're playing that there is a difference. You turn it up a little bit, and you start to really hear kind of like a warm, a warmth under it. And then, of course, as the song progresses, I'm going to turn this up a little bit, maybe for the second section. And then once I get to the solo, I'm going to crank it up even more. Okay, so the next pedal that we're going to add in is probably the most important pedal for this song, which is the wah pedal. I'm using the Crybaby Wah by Dunlop Pedals. I've had this thing for a very long time, as you can tell by some of the love marks that it has on it. So for this song, there's a lot of down, up, down, up, down, up just like that. But for other sections in the song, uh, what I do a lot is kind of playing it with the tone a little bit more so it's not always on the beat. You can hear if I turn up the overdrive a lot. 
Because I put the wall after the overdrive, there's still quite a big effect. The next pedal we're going to add is probably the most unusual sound that we're going to put in here. This is going to be the Moog Mini Fugger Chorus pedal, which is actually the pedal that made me not hate chorus. I previously was very much opposed to chorus on guitar, although if you are familiar with our most recent album 4, then you will know that I'm no longer even remotely afraid of chorus. Um, but this one is cool because it actually doesn't sound like any other chorus pedal. It kind of has some elements of phaser, some elements of flanger. A lot of times I'll use it for a vibrato. So for example, what we can do for this song is get a vibrato that's... Something like that. And instead of being so obvious like this, I can turn the depth down. Where in context, you're really not gonna be able to tell that it's there, it's just more of a tone. Okay, the next effect that I'm gonna add is a delay, and it's actually in the same line of pedals as this chorus. It's the Moog Mini Fugger Delay. This is another pedal that I love so much, it almost never leaves my board. It's an analog delay. If you turn the feedback up high enough, it'll start to uh, self-oscillate and kind of create a feedback loop, which you can then use the knobs to adjust and control and make crazy sounds, and that can be another source of fun, unusual sounds. So for this song, I'm gonna use just a very quick kind of slap delay and not very many repeats, not very loud. So I'm going for something that's not really in your face, not that noticeable, but just a subtle effect. So that just kind of sounds like it's bouncing around really fast, but to the casual listener, maybe it doesn't really sound like there's anything there at all. So now I'm gonna add one last effect and that's gonna be a little bit of reverb and I'm using this MXR reverb. It's really good because it has a bunch of different kinds and especially for a band like Fork when we're using different sounds from one song to the next, different genres even sometimes, um, it's really helpful to have that sort of thing. I will keep it basically on with the reverb either down or down almost all the way and then kind of adjust as needed. If it were off it would be and on is just to feel like you're comfortable, you're in the room with the instrument. So this is all that together. One last thing I'm gonna show you that we ended up doing in the studio and we do a lot is recording stereo into two guitars and using slightly different sounds on each amp and then panning them and if you listen closely, you can start to hear this in the recording. So just to demonstrate, we'll route two different outputs to two different amps. So on the left side, you're gonna hear just the delay going into the Supro Royal Reverb. And on the right side, we're gonna hear just the reverb going into my Fender Brownface Princeton.
And that's pretty much it. Hope you enjoyed this breakdown of the guitar and keyboard sounds on Duck People. Thanks a lot, everybody. Tune in next time.